I'll be starting in just a few minutes or a couple of minutes, one minute. Okay. So today what we're going to do is take the bodice slopers that we draped on um, the last time, and we are going to turn those into a working pattern. And now what a working pattern is, is basically a pattern where you can start to make all your changes, correct anything you need to correct, add stuff, take stuff away. It's basically the pattern you're working on versus a production pattern, which is completely finished, tested, everything's ready to go for production. So for this, we're just working on a basic, um, we're going to trace this out and then we are going to, get my stiletto. we're going to trace this out and then we're going to true this and truing involves taking all the measurements of things that need to sew together and making sure they go together. Okay. Now, the other part of this is that we haven't done the skirt yet, and that's okay. So what we're going to do is just focus on the bodice for right now. And then when we get there, I will talk to you about where things need to move once we get the, the skirt done. So we're going to kind of focus on everything that's just cleaning this up. And then once we have the skirt done, then we'll talk about joining those two things together. Okay. So another thing about this is that I'm going to be doing this demonstration in a big marker. And the only reason I'm doing it in a big marker is so you can see my lines. Normally, I would never do this in a marker. I would use a mechanical pencil. Uh, you want it as um, you want it as fluid. I'm sorry, you want it as sort of thin and precise as possible. You don't want a big chunky marker because that'll distort your lines. So um, for this, well, I'm just going to do everything in marker so you can see what I'm doing. I'll probably use a couple of different markers to show you a few different things, okay? Uh, when you are working with this, sometimes it does help to work with a, a different colored pencil sometimes um, once you start making corrections. That way you don't get lost, but it's not necessary. So for this, I am going to um, I'm going to start by we're going to start with the front and then we're going to move to the back. Now you'll notice how this is laid out and this is laid out with center front facing the right and center back facing the left. It should be like on my screen for some stupid reason, YouTube flips it for me. It, it's incorrect for me, but it should be correct for you. Well, the reason we do this, and even if you had draped this on the opposite side for whatever reason, you just want to make sure that the seams that sew together, in this case, it's the side seam, the seams that sew together go together. Now, we're going to be cutting this apart in a little bit, but it does help to have these things to where you can at least orient yourself to how things lay out, okay? So um, always sort of think about going from left to right or even right to left in draping and in pattern making, at least what we teach at school is center front goes to the right, center back goes to the left. This is not always the case, but it is good to have a reference for yourself that way you don't get lost. Um, you'll see that some menswear patterns are draped where center front is actually on the left. And... Um, I, and sometimes you'll even see some women's wear patterns where the center front is on the left. So it, it just depends on what you're doing and how you're doing it. If you start with a, a simple system, like, you know, always keeping center front to the right, it, it'll just help get, make sure that you get things lined up. Also, uh, if we had a, a, 
uh, well, the other reason we're only starting, we're doing the bodice and then we'll do the skirt later is because I don't have a, a visual field on the camera big enough for this. So um, I can't do everything all at once. So it, it's, we're going to just start do it in chunks. So we're going to do the, the bodice and then we'll do the skirt afterwards. And I'll show you how to correct as you go once we start getting to the skirt. And we're going to have to move some stuff. So nothing we do today is permanent, okay? Uh, well, within reason, some stuff is. Um, another thing is, like I was saying, uh, when you have a, a sloper that you're doing, and let's say you have all four pieces, what you need to do is lay them out the way they would normally be laid out. So you have the front bodice here, the back bodice here. You'd have the front skirt here and the back skirt here. And that way you can see where things go and then measuring makes way more sense. Now for this, um, I'm gonna cut these pieces apart eventually because it'll make it easier to do it on camera. But um, normally when you're doing something like this, you need to keep it all connected, okay? Uh, but it's not, you don't always have to do that. It's just these are all old technical things that um, help but don't aren't necessarily in stone somewhere. Okay, so first things first, we're going to move the back off the paper, focus this here. And um, the first thing we need to do, as we will often do whenever we're starting something, is we're going to use a straight line. Now, I'm using dot-to-dot -dot paper, and dot-to-dot -dot paper is specifically designed for pattern making, um, not necessarily just for clothing, but we use it mainly for clothing and accessories, design, whatever, teddy bears, doesn't matter. Um, it has all these dots on here. And these dots are set at one inch apart. I don't wanna... These dots are like, they're numbers. So you'll see like two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then a letter. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, a letter, one, two, and it keeps going like that. The letters and the numbers are just so you can reference points on the paper. However, I never tell students to use this as a number grid because if you were to measure this, these are spaced out in one inch increments and that's great. But the problem is where on this square is the one inch increment? If you were to measure to the outside of the numbers, well, that would give you one measurement. If you measure to the inside of the numbers, that would give you another measurement. The technical place to measure is literally in the middle of each of these numbers. And that can sometimes get a little weird if you're trying to just draw a line. You don't necessarily think the center is gonna be the best place to do it. I typically tell students, just pick one edge and go from there. Um, so as you do this, let's see if I can get the whole thing in there. Nope. There we go. So as you do this, um, what you need to remember is that at, when you draw a line, just use the paper as a grid. Don't try to use it as a... Um, don't try to use it as a measuring system, just use it as a grid, okay? So when I start drawing, I wanna make sure that I draw a straight line with my ruler on one side or the other of a number. Just make sure that when you do this, it's consistent. It doesn't matter where, oh, I got some tape on here. It doesn't matter where you draw this as long as it's consistent. So like right here, oops, you can't see it. So like right here, I'm going through the little hump of the D, I'm doing the same thing right here. So throughout this whole thing, I'm exactly placed on those letters on the same place. It doesn't matter if it's to this side or that side of the letters, as long as I'm in the same place on the letters, okay? Next, I'm going to take my drape and I'm going to line up my center front line on the line I just drew. I'm gonna take push pins and I'm gonna push them in 
in a few stress points. Now you'll see what I'm doing. I'm not like trying to like really move this. Once I've lined this up, I'm just using my fingernails to kind of line it up if I need to. I'm not like sliding it around with my hands. Consider this very delicate at this point, although it's not, but just make sure that you're not moving things around too much. See like up here, I did when I was talking. So all I'm doing is just sort of moving it to where I want all these lines lined up exactly on each other. And again, that's why I like these specific push pins because they're really nice to be able to um, press into, okay? Now we'll need a stiletto wheel and that's where this comes in. This is a very sharp instrument, although these wheels, this is, this is probably my first stiletto uh, that I had when I was in school. Um, if you take care of your stuff, you'll always have it. Um, this uh, stiletto wheel has very sharp spikes on it, and it allows us to go through multiple layers of paper. So what in this case, we don't have multiple layers. Like if we were doing pleats or something, it would it would be very, very handy um, in that sense. But in here, what it allows us to do is to trace along all of our marked edges, okay? Now, there is another way to do this. I don't like it as much because of the way it distorts the paper. You can put this underneath your paper and trace on top of it. The reason, like I said, I don't like that is because it sort of like cushions the paper and you get more wrinkles. So this is a method I prefer. Uh, holding your stiletto like this with a little hump up, I'm going to trace along. Now look at how I'm doing this. I'm holding the fabric with my fingers like a little bridge. And what that does is it holds tension on either side of the line that I'm tracing. Also from here, I am going to do the same thing, except I'm pulling tension behind it. And here, cross marking right there, because that's what we need to, because that's our bust point. And then here, same thing, I'm pulling tension down as I'm running the stiletto up, okay? And just go around the drape exactly as you've traced. So I can get that in frame. Okay. Just go around this exactly as you've traced. Even if your lines are a little wobbly, just trace them as exactly as you've draped and just hold tension. I'm going to have to stand up for this. Just hold tension on the fabric. That way. Pulling back. That way you can get all of your lines. Okay. Okay. Now I'm just gonna focus on the front for right now. So let's see if I can. Get that. Yeah, right there. Okay, so now that I've marked everything with my stiletto, and before you yank this off, make sure that you have marked everything And you think we're done with this, we're not. Always save these until you're absolutely done with the pattern transfer, because you might have to reference it. Now, for this, again, normally I would never do this, but what I'm going to do, make sure you can see that. You cannot. Can you see that? Yeah, but that's dull. Hold on. 
There we go. Okay. So for this, normally I would not do this, but I'm doing this anyway. I am going to draw my stiletto lines in a color. In this case, I'm using light blue. Now, normally I would not even bother doing this or I would do it in light pencil. Uh, just so you can see where the lines are because this is a little difficult and you can't see anything on camera. So all I'm doing is drawing exactly as I've traced in blue. And remember, I just said I would never normally do this, but since you need to see what I'm doing, I'm going to draw this out. Now this is exactly as I have traced. So this is exactly on my stiletto line. So it's wobbly, lumpy, not correct yet. Okay, and so you can see the light blue, that's the exact drape trace. That's the exact trace that I have. See, it might be work better if I did this. Yeah, okay, that's gonna work better. So normally I wouldn't do this, but I'm gonna cut the paper, like I said, because I think it'll be easier for you guys to see. Okay, so here's my bodice. Be better like this. Yeah, like that'll work. Okay, so here's my bodice, and I have traced it out, and this is center front, and everything else is away from it. Now, the next thing I have to do is I need to true up everything. And what that means, well, it's not truing, it's correcting. So let's, I'm gonna do all my corrections in black, that way it's a stark contrast to the blue. So let's just start with the straight lines. I know by my drape that the side seam and the shoulder need to be straight lines. So let's go ahead and clean those up. Now, why do we know this? Because it's a straight line on the mannequin. And when I trace the drape, I was just a little bit crooked. And you can see the blue is the original line and the black is now the corrected line. So same thing here, go point to point. Okay, same thing like on the side seam. Draw a straight line across and that cleans up the shoulder. So all I did was go point to point and draw a straight line. And that cleans up the shoulder and the side seam, okay? The next thing we need to look at is right here, which is center front at where it ends up into the, the leg of the bot of the, um, of the dart. Now, I know that if I'm going to do a symmetrical design, that folds on center front or even extends past center front, that right here, I need to have a 90 degree angle. And it doesn't necessarily have to be a 90 degree angle all the way across, but it does need to be a slight 90, no, it needs to be a perfect 90 degree angle at center front, tapering off into something else if I need to. So for this, if I were to draw a straight line from this point over, look how much I'm off. Now, the drape told me that's not correct. The drape is this shape right here. So this is where all of your rulers are going to come in handy.
and we're going to find a curve that comes closest. If I can get in here without hitting the camera. That comes closest to cleaning up this 90 degree angle. So what I'm going to do is give myself a little bit of a guideline. Now that guideline touches where it needs to touch at a 90 degree angle at center front. And that is the symbol for a 90 degree angle, a little L. Then I'm going to use my ruler to draw to that first dart leg. And now I have a nice, neat, cleaned up line that is a perfect 90 degree angle at center front. The next lines that we have that we need to deal with are right here and right here. This is the dart. Now, we know darts, as far as sloper darts are concerned, we talked about this, they're going to be straight lines. You don't want them to be curves because that's a contoured dart and that's more of a pattern thing than it is a, um, than it is a, oh, that camera's weird, uh, more of a pattern thing than it is a uh, sloper thing. Let me see if, let's see. Now, for this, I also have a cross mark right here where my bus point is. So my bus point is right here in the center because that's where I needed the dart to stop, right at the bus point. So I just drew the lines past it. So what I'm going to do is from that bus point down to this dart leg, I'm going to draw a straight line. You see how crooked my blue line was when I traced it out. Now here, I'm going to do the same thing. From that point right there, which is the bus point, down to where this dart leg is. Now that straightens up and finishes my dart, which now this BP represents the bus point. Okay, so that's how you can clean up any wobbly dart legs. Well, in this case, at least. Straight lines. Okay, now we have a little bit of a curve right here. In order to fix that, what we're going to do is take a ruler that matches that curve to some degree And we are going to draw that curve point to point. And again, it just cleans up that line. Okay? Now, what else do we have to do? The neck. The neck ends up at center front. Center front, if I needed a 90 degree angle right here for center front, chances are I need a 90 degree angle right here for center front at the neck. So same thing, I'm going to draw, let me use my ruler, I'm going to draw a guideline. And that guideline just gives me a perfect 90 degree angle to center front. Now, take a, well, let's do it with this. With our uh, number 17, with our number, uh, French curve number 17, what I'm going to do is try to find a little bitty 90 degree angle off of this point. Now this is a 90 degree angle because when we have a shoulder that sets into it, we want to make sure that those two seam with that when that other edge comes to this edge, it matches smoothly. We don't want a point that points in and we don't want a point that 
uh, we don't want a point that points out or a point that points in. We want a nice, smooth, clean line. So now I have two 90 degree angles. I can try to find my lines off of. Let's see if this is better. Sometimes I can find it better with one, even though it's the same ruler. See, always, every time. So here, 90 degree angle. Follow it around until it hits the neckline. Now I have a smooth 90 degree angle right here, ending at center front at a 90 degree angle. When you have two seams that need to sew together, you don't necessarily always have to have a 90 degree angle, but it does help. Okay, so the next thing we have to deal with is the armhole. Now, remember when I told you just draw an armhole, don't worry about what it looks like? This is where we need to worry about what it looks like. So where this is, I'm going to try to find a 90 degree angle that isn't too far in, I'm sorry, too far outside of the armhole and not too far into the armhole. So the bulk of this curve that I've drawn right here is about here. So this would be about where I would like to have that 90 degree angle. Now this also depends on um, what's happening with the shoulder and all kinds of stuff. But before we get there, we need to figure out whether or not our armhole is correct. That's where this little puppy comes in. This is, for all intents and purposes, the shape of the armhole you need. Is it always perfect? No. But it gives you a pretty good idea of where you're going with it. So you see that the armhole I drew is right here. And the armhole that the ruler is telling me it needs, I just had it is approximately the same. Correct? Kind of. So what I'm going to do is draw this in against the ruler. Now, this right here isn't necessarily a 90 degree angle. See? It's off. But before I start correcting this, I'm going to do the back, and you'll see why in just a second. So keep in mind, remember when I put this up here and I had that little 90-degree angle right there, and I was like, okay, that's about where it should be? Kind of just keep that in the back of your head for now. So this is my cleaned-up armhole. This is not in any way, shape, or form exactly what it needs to be, and I'll explain that in just a minute. So as far as we're concerned... Our bodice front has been cleaned up and all our lines are straight, curved, correct, ready to be trued. That's all this is. Okay. Now let's jump to the back and we're going to repeat the process for this. And remember, I'm working to the left for this. Come on. Okay. So for this, I'm going to line this up. And I'm going from this point because my line's a little crooked. Oops, you can't see. Uh, so my my purple line. I don't know why it's crooked, but I'm going to go from this point right here where it hits that center back line to this point right here where it hits the center back line. And I'm going to use those two points as my reference points 
And that's where I'm going to start putting in push pins and keeping everything straight. Okay. Now I'm just going to trace this out as quickly as I can. And again, see what I'm doing? Little bridge over my dart legs. And I'm going to cross that right there. Trace it exactly as it is draped. Hopefully my armholes are completely wrong. Now I can show you how to fix that. I'm just tracing out exactly as it is. Oops, a little cross mark. Okay, make sure everything has been traced. I think so. Yeah. Okay. The exact same process as the front. So once again, I'm going to draw in all of my lines exactly as they are traced in blue. My guidelines. Make sure that all of my lines are drawn correctly. And there we go. Okay, so, piece of tape. So I have my bodice traced out in blue. So we got a lot of stuff to focus on the back. We've got two darts to deal with. We've got uh, armholes, all kinds of stuff. So let's start down here. Now, again, we know this sews to a straight seam on the front. So what we're going to do is clean this up. Straight line. Shoulder should also be a straight line. So I'm just going point to point, drawing this out a straight line. Don't worry about the dart right now. So looking at this, where this hits down here, this is also a 90 degree angle. Oops, sorry. A 90 degree angle at center back. But this curve goes up slightly. So we're going to see if we can find that curve. And I had one student just absolutely amazed that I used this side of the ruler one time. And I was like, well, why can't you? And she was like, I don't know. So congratulations. You now know you can use both sides of the ruler. Over here, same thing. What I want to do is find a curve that matches this smoothly. This might not be a 90 degree angle and that's okay. I'm going to show you how to fix it in just a second. Well, it's not fix it, how to smooth it out. Now up here, we have a center back seam. This right here should be again, a 90 degree angle. Then Take your ruler and find the angle as it is drawn. Okay? Again, we also have a neckline that we have to match this to, right? So all we're doing here is cleaning stuff up. Now we have two darts to deal with. Whenever you're doing a cleaning up like this, we're just cleaning up lines and things. Make sure you're doing these independently. Do the front, then do the back. Then in just a second, we're going to put them together. So you'll see where everything is going to change. Okay. 
So for this, I know that that cross mark is where I need to stop my dart. So this line's here and this line's here. What I'm going to do is on that cross mark, I'm going to make a dot in the exact center of where those two darts should stop. Then I'm going to draw from that dot to the two dart leg points. And that fixes that dart. Again, we will deal with moving stuff in just a minute. But all I'm doing right now is cleaning stuff up. Ah. Okay. Now this dart, we need to make sure this dart is as straight as possible. As it is, it's leaning a little bit for me. Let's see if you can see it better. Okay, yeah, it's still a little leaning. So what we need to do is give ourselves some kind of happy medium here. We have a center back line. Anything at a 90 degree angle will be perpendicular to it. So where my mark is in between those two dart legs, I'm going to make a 90 degree angle line. Using the grid system of the paper, I'm going to find the center of those two dart legs. So I have a little cross mark right there that tells me that is where I need to draw my dart. That is against the cross mark I did on the drape and now at a 90 degree angle then perpendicular to that. From that point down, using your ruler against some number, doesn't matter which number, just as long as you keep this parallel to the back, parallel to center back, Draw a straight line straight down. So, what I did was I found my little cross mark up here. I put my ruler at that point, and then I used the ruler lines here against the numbers. And they're at the same point on each number it doesn't necessarily need to be the same number but like this is on that side of the two this is on that side of the four this is on that side of the seven and there that one particular line is in the exact same spot so that i can draw a parallel line to center back okay now a little bit of math, but it's functional math, so it's not too difficult. Take a little, you can measure this if you want, but I just, it's so much easier to do this. Take a little scrap of paper, and what you're going to do is you're going to mark the intake of the dart from leg opening to leg opening on this little piece of paper. Then you're going to fold it in half exactly on the mark. Now what that does is it gives me half of the dart marked. I want to straighten this dart up. So what I'm going to do is along the waist line, which is down here, I'm going to take half the dart and make a mark. Along the waistline, I'm going to take half the dart and make a mark. Now, bet you can see what's coming. From those two marks, draw up to your little cross mark up here. And what that does is it straightens out your dart. So now I don't have a wobbly dart anymore. I have a nice, sharp, clean dart that is parallel 
to center back. The next thing we need to worry about is this back arm hole. Again, same rules apply. Find the curve, kind of, sort of, as much as you can. If you have to break it up, you could do that too. On here. And draw your curve. It's going to be much more shallow than the front. Again, this might not be what we need to do, but we now have a cleaned up line where we can start working. Okay? So for this, because I have to use so much space, I'm going to have to spread this out so hopefully you all can see everything. But I'll try to get it in little chunks. Okay? Now, Let's label these so we don't lose track of what we're doing. Okay. Now, I'm also just going to get rid of some of the paper on the excess, uh, some of the excess paper. You, you don't have to, but I think it'd be easier for me dealing with the camera. Remember, never cut exactly on the line you want to always leave a little paper halo around everything you're working with. Because if you don't, you'll regret it. Okay, so let's do some of the obvious ones first. The obvious thing is side seams need to sew to side seams. So for this, I would never normally fold the paper, but for you guys, I'm going to. So you can see it better on your end. In person, this makes a lot more sense to not do this. But here, all I've done is I folded that paper and put it against the side seam. And you can tell that my side seam, if I match it up here, I'm about an eighth of an inch off down here. And if I match it down here, I'm an eighth of an inch off up here. Well, we got a problem, don't we? What I need to do is split the difference. And splitting the difference tells us that if I take this difference, which in this case is about an eighth of an inch, if I were to add a little to the short side and take away a little from the long side, it'll equal out. Now, how much do you take away? Approximately half, exactly half, half. So if I'm off an eighth of an inch, that means I need to take away a sixteenth of an inch on the long side and add a sixteenth of an inch to the short side. Easy peasy. However, in pattern making, that's what you'd need to do. In draping, I think you have a little bit more leeway. So for this, do you see that if I match up here, I'm okay. If I match down here, I'm just slightly up. The reason these two don't match exactly, it might just be the fact that I'm using a chunky marker. So what I'm going to do is match them in the one place I don't really want to have to mess with, which is the armhole, because look at that nice smooth curve. That's nice. I don't want to have to like redraw that curve. So I'm going to match this up at the armhole and look down here. Right here, I just need, let me put a push pin to hold this so I don't move it. Come on. Okay. 
So right here, I have a little bit of a jog, and a jog is where two things don't match. So what I'm going to do is use my ruler here, and I'm going to try to find the least resistance between the two. Might have to change that up. Okay. So if I put my ruler against this and the smoothness against the bulk of that line right there, so right here and right there, you'll see I bridge that gap in between. That little bit of a gap in there is bridged. So now what I can do, and if you need to, you can trace with your stiletto. What I'm going to do is just correct it with my marker. And when you see a line like that with two little hash marks through it, that means that line doesn't exist anymore. And so that's what I just did. I just put two little hash marks through that other line. So now I have just corrected my curve down here. Now, how much can you just correct without having to split the difference? In my book, it's an eighth of an inch, especially when you're draping, because that could have just been fabric shifting. In pattern making, ah, eh, I would probably still do it at an eighth of an inch, although that's a me thing. Um, an eighth of an inch can compound on you, but when you're doing something like this, where it's literally just the width of a marker, I would probably just err on the side of caution and go to the go to the larger, which in this case is just literally the width of a marker. So I'm not going to worry about it. Um, if it's an issue where you have to correct a pattern and you have like a half inch difference, then you have to get out the math and do a technical split the difference. And we'll, we'll do more complicated things later on in the semester where we're going to have that kind of a thing. And we might even have it up here at the armhole. But for now, it's just a fudge of an eighth of an inch. Okay, so you can just you can work an eighth of an inch to your advantage, however you need to do it. When in doubt, make something longer. Because you can always trim it off. Okay, so that's the side seam. Now, when I'm done truing something, I always put little check marks to say, I've done that. That's fixed. I don't have to think about that anymore. Now, the next seam that sews to something else is the shoulder. Uh-oh, we got a problem. We have a dart. Now, there's an easy way to do this. It's kind of a pattern making thing. It's up to you. Um, the technical way to do this, and I'm just gonna steal a book here, a really tacky book. Okay. The technical way to do this is to find the dart leg, in this case, the corrected dart leg, that is closest to center back. Fold that dart leg to the point Give it a decent crease. Then, sorry, placing the bulk of the pattern off of a corner of something elevated, you are going to fold the dart closed. And sadly, I've been doing this too long because it matches perfectly and I did not want it to match perfectly. Oh, whatever. This is my, my burden to bear. Um, and this will get you what is known as the dart intake. Now, I'm not going to do it on this book, but this will pop up in just a second. Okay. So now that you have that line drawn, you can do two things. You can go over it with your stiletto on your corrected line. And that will give you the dart intake shape, which I'll show you in just a second. And you can place this up against your shoulder. And see how well you match. Now, as you can plainly see, I do not match on the armhole. So I do match over here. 
But again, same thing. If I were to smooth this over in the middle, I'd be off a little bit here and off a little bit here. Now, in this case, because it's the shoulder, I would probably rather have split the difference. Do you remember when I was drawing my armhole and I said, hey, we're going to need a 90 degree angle up here at one point. Look where the original, look where the back runs into that. Doesn't that look like about the spot I had my 90 degree angle? So what that tells me, see if I can find my ruler without disrupting everything. Oh, look, it's almost perfect. Exactly where I said it would be. So that's why I haven't changed anything yet. Now, right here, what I'm going to do is we haven't trued the armholes yet. So I know I need to double check and make sure that my armhole is correct. So we're going to do that in just a second. But for right now, I can correct over here. So splitting the difference here a little bit over and a little bit over on the short side is going to tell me that I can now correct this. Now, I have a couple of options. My difference here is about a quarter of an inch. My difference here is about a quarter of an inch. So for this, what I can do, well, let's talk about this. Your neckline is not in stone yet. And your armhole's not in stone. So we've got two really good places to change things up. So right here, what I'm going to do, instead of splitting the difference and changing this, uh, changing the back or drastically changing the front, what I'm going to do, well, yeah, it's going to be the same. Right in the middle of that space. Do you see that? Here's, the, here's my front, here's my back, that gap in the middle. I'm just going to take my stiletto and make a mark in the middle. And that will allow me to redraw my neck to the front and redraw my neck to the back at that exact same place. Okay? Now, I'm not even going to worry. Well, what I'll do here is I'm going to make a mark with my stiletto where the back comes in. And right here, I'm going to get out my ruler. And I'm going to correct. To the new placement. And I'm going to correct. to the new placement. So that now, when I put these two together, where they're supposed to be, I'll get a nice smooth transition from the back to the front. Okay? Now here, tracing that shape, that gives us the intake for the shoulder dart. Now, pull this back a little bit. We can deal with the armholes. Again, I'm not going to worry too much about the shoulders right here up here because I know this flowing into here is going to give me a straight line. So I'm not going to worry about that too much. So here, these two arcs, I need to get them relatively equal. 
in order to do this, I need to measure them and see how off they are. Now, why would we need to equalize an armhole? And we're equalizing them in measurement. We're not equalizing them in shape. We equalize them in measurement because when we draft a sleeve for this armhole, we need to make sure that our arc is clean. Okay? Here are these. Let's see. Um, you don't know what that is. Okay. So once we have these arcs cleaned up and set in the sense of measurements, then we can draft any sleeve that we want. So for this, let's measure our armholes. Notice I'm using the edge of my ruler to measure this. This is eight and three eighths. Eight and three eighths, as is. I'm hoping this is at least slightly off. This is, oh good, well it's not awesome, but it's fine. This is eight and a quarter, okay? So, damn it, I have, I've been doing this too long. I have eight and three eighths on this side and I have eight and a quarter over here. When you are equalizing an armhole, you can be within one quarter inch of one or the other. I am within one eighth of an inch of one or the other. This is three eighths. This is a quarter. If I just add one more eighth of an inch over here, I'll be fine. Sadly. Um, so I don't have to change anything on these armholes. I was really good at what I did and I got them exactly where they needed to be. Um, however, I'm going to show you in just a second on a demo how to fix these should they not be equal. So... <laughs> Uh, sometimes I'm just, you know, whatever. Um, so anyway, these I don't have to touch. However, I do still have an issue up here. So if I were to put this at that mark, let's see, let's do this. If I were to put this at that mark right there, what I would do is put this exactly where that is. It's hard to be humble. It is. Well, I mean, it's, you know, it drives me crazy sometimes. I try to do a demo and I keep forgetting I'm teaching. All right. So that's the mark I made that is where it needs to be. So here I'm going to put my shoulder against that line and I'm just going to draw in blending into the armhole that line. Now look at this. We have a nice smooth transition from the back to the front. Okay. Now double check that measurement. Even though it was just a slight angle change, you can easily mess it up. And I bet you anything, this will be eight and three eighths. Perfect still. Okay. So that corrects the front and the back bodice. Okay? So if you missed that, double check the video. Um, that gives us, oh, I guess I should do it right side up. Uh, that gives us, um, yeah, a corrected front and back bodice. Now, here's the thing. This dart and this dart might not stay where we have draped them or where we have drafted them. So when we get to the skirt, we're going to look at this and we're going to say, hey, this is now straight and parallel to center back. So this dart probably won't be moving all that much. This dart, we just drew in. We didn't double check it against center front or anything like that. So this dart can still rotate a little bit. 
So this is going to be the one we're going to be focusing on when we get to the front. And this one is going to be the one. So what's going to happen is our skirt dart is going to be the dart within reason that tells us where this one goes. And for the back, this dart within reason is going to tell us where the skirt dart goes. Okay. So once we do the skirt drapes on Wednesday, um, I'm not saying Tuesday and Thursday, when we do the skirt drapes on Wednesday, we are going to double check a measurement here and double check a measurement here and then see what happens as the drape goes by. Okay. So uh, if you have any questions about any of this, you can ask in Canvas or something or in chat, but I'm going to show you what would happen if you did not have perfect armholes. And it's very much that you might not have perfect armholes because, well, <sighs> we're learning. Now, I'm just going to do like a dummy um, well, I guess I can do this. Hold on. Okay, I'm just going to trace this out really quickly, but I'm going to make this really, um, really wrong. That you would never have a back armhole that looked like that. This over here would be the front. Okay. What's happening here? Just a second. Okay. So, with this, we need to measure these armholes. And these are going to be really off, big time. This is nine and a quarter. This is still... Eight and three eighths. Okay. Now, these are this way. Yeah, I forget my camera's upside down now. I gotta do math. So, what is the difference between? Let's see. Let me do this math real quick. So nine. 0.25 minus 8. Point, what is it? 375? Yeah, 375 equals 7 eighths. The difference between these two is 7 eighths. That's a lot. That's not a quarter of an inch. So with this, what I need to do is get this armhole smaller and this armhole bigger. To make an armhole bigger, you come in to the pattern. To make an armhole smaller, you go outside of the pattern. So we're trying to split the difference here between these two armholes, getting them within a quarter of an inch. So here, eight and three eighths, I need to make a little bit bigger. So what I'm going to do is eyeball a little to the inside. Yes, I just said eyeball. And this, what I need to do is eyeball a little to the outside of the pattern. Now, I have followed the arc. So it's not exactly like I'm just like shooting in the breeze here. I follow the arc. I've just come in and out a little bit. Okay. So now let's measure that new line. 
This is now eight and five eighths. This is now oh, eight and three quarters. The difference being 0.75 minus 8.625, uh, one eighth of an inch. Sorry. So that doing that fixed my measurement problem. There could be instances where you have to keep dialing in and dialing in and dialing in. So if you need to, let me see if I can find the blue. Here we go. So if you need to, you can keep coming in and keep going out. And vice versa. If you need to make something bigger or something smaller, you can just keep coming in and going out. Now, how much did I initially go out? From this edge around here, about a quarter of an inch. Over here, about eh, a chunky quarter of an inch. Will you always know how much to go out? No. But what you need to do is give yourself some reference points on here. Just a couple of points somewhere, like give me a point here, give me a point here, redraw, redraw, test it, see if it works. Now, this is also going on the assumption that your shape is correct, like getting rid of that and getting rid of the blue. It's a bit more shallow here. But remember, I just drew this out, so this would really be more of an arc that looks like this, um, not an arc that looks like that, okay? So this was just me being sloppy and getting it done. But the measurement issue is still the same. Once you're within a quarter of an inch of either measurement, you're set. Some people are lucky, and they get exactly on it. And if I'd have eaten my Wheaties when I did that drape, I probably could have gotten it exactly without even trying. But what you need to do is just get your armholes within one quarter of an inch. And when we draft a sleeve, it'll make sense. We'll go to the larger measurement. And it'll build in ease, and you won't have to think twice about it, okay? Um, but that, that's for another day. But that's how you would get your armholes to equalize. This is a simplified version, and it's more nuanced when you're doing it. But uh, you need to... Um, what you need to do is just increment, little increments going in or out, depending on what you need to do. If your armhole is too small, come into the pattern. If your armhole is too big, go outside of the pattern. Okay? And that'll help you shrink in and play with your armhole as you need to. And then you can double check your shoulder measurements and down here where things need to go. Now, if you just need to make the armholes bigger in general, let's say that these two equal, like let's say the pink is perfect and that's the perfect measurement we need, perfect. But you still need to make them bigger, but the shapes are correct. Let's say that the shapes are correct, the measurements are correct, but the armhole just isn't big enough. Um, that's when you're gonna come down on the side seam and come down equal distance and then from there, blend into your new corrected armhole. Now, how much do you go down? I don't know. It's up to you. It depends on how big you want the armhole. Um, from your fixed point on your mannequin, I would say about a finger, which is a roughly half inch. Okay? Um, no more than that. I mean, you could go like an inch down if you needed to, but the further down you take this armhole, the more restricted you make it. Because um, at one point, it's just going to be so far down to the waist, you're not going to be able to raise the armhole. So just make sure that when you're dropping this, you don't drop it too, too far, but don't go any more than about half an inch right now. Okay? Uh, but you shouldn't have to do that if you've uh, marked it correctly with the two fingers below the plate on the man on the... Um, on the mannequin and you should be okay. You should be okay with that for now. And you know, you still have to get this on a human being. You still have to do all that stuff to get it correct. And what I've decided we're going to do for this, again, depending on what happens going back, um, 
after we get this done, after we get our slopers chewed and corrected, I'm going to do a sample in muslin and I'm going to put it on the mannequin and I'm going to show you how to correct things once you've gotten your sloper trued. Okay. So um, that'll be hopefully the last thing we do in online before we move transition back to class. If not, we'll figure it out later. Okay. So that's it. That's it's literally what you think it needs to do. You're just getting these lines cleaned up and you are going for a truing. You're just making sure everything that sews together goes together. Clean up your darts, make sure everything's nice and neat. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to save these and we are going to uh, work on the skirt on Wednesday. We're going to do the front and the back. And then the following Monday, I'm going to show you how to change, how to correct the skirts. Okay. There's a couple of little issues with the skirts that are always a problem um, on the side seam, but we'll get it done. Okay. So that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to email me or message me on Canvas. If not, I will see you on, I'll see you on Wednesday. All right. If you have any questions, uh, chat or uh, Canvas chat or email. Um, if not, I will see you then. Bye. Uh, if we don't have dot paper, we practice on blank paper. Yes, you can practice on any paper that you want. Um, like I said, this is uh, that butcher paper I get from Sam's. I'm really lazy about going to get my dot to dot paper. And this is right next to me here on my little works table. I use this most of the time. And as long as you have a an L square or something like this, you can easily draft on this. It's more economical too. It's just not as wide. So if you're doing a ball gown, you're in trouble. But um, if you're doing bodices or something small, you can even just like tape a couple of pieces together. So I, I, I do suggest you go get some, even like HEB sells that pink butcher paper. That'll work too. It doesn't have to be white. Um, use that pink butcher paper, uh, butcher paper that HEB sells. And it's I think it's the same width. I think it's like 18 inches wide. 18 or 20 inches, okay? Yeah, but easily, you could work on any paper that you have. Um, that'll work, okay? If you have any more questions, uh, Canvas or email, and I will see you all on Wednesday. Bye.